Hi everybody, welcome to Simply Scuba. I'm Mark, a former dive instructor, and I'm answering questions from Google today with the starting phrase, how scuba, and seeing where that takes me. Is it hard to learn scuba? Not particularly. Your first foundational course is gonna be fairly heavy in like the learnings because you need to learn about a few of the new concepts but the course structures are all made to be as easy to understand as possible in a range of different learning styles as well from pictures and diagrams to videos uh, just text uh, quick quizzes so the quick quizzes help to uh, sort of check that you understand what you're learning as you go through it by yourself and then you have to go back through it if you don't understand something but then then you have your instructor who is there to teach you all of it um, and ex basically explain anything that you don't understand or didn't understand from your homework. Once you learn the basics, you can then progress into different specialities uh, of scuba diving that all adds onto the foundations that you've already built. Physically, most courses are performance based, so you do need to complete certain skills before you're signed off, but we're not expecting like Olympic tier movements and times. Scuba diving is recreational and things should be calm and collected. It's, it's not hard to learn how to scuba dive, even at a, a young age, and there are lots of amazing instructors out there who are just ready to teach you. How do scuba divers move underwater? gracefully. Uh, divers wear fins on our feet and use our legs for propulsion. Your arms and your hands are relatively useless in the water, so they tend to get just tucked away. Um, we do have a few different fin kick styles, how we move our fins for different situations. And after a while, you just, or your body kind of learns how to move itself through the water and even swim backwards without thinking too much. Ideally, you want to be in as horizontal a position as possible with nice streamlined equipment to minimize drag. If you're horizontal, then you're not wasting any energy swimming up to then go back down. It becomes a zigzag um, and needing to correct yourself uh, so that after every few meters. So when you're nice and horizontal, it is just that. But moving is slow and deliberate with a good pair of fins and nice streamlined equipment. Do scuba tanks float? Some do. Uh, it's all a matter of buoyancy. It depends on the amount of water that they displace and the weight of the cylinder and what's inside. Steel cylinders are quite heavy and they always tend to sink. Aluminium cylinders, depending on their size, often tend to sink at the start of the dive, but then float towards the end of the dive. That's because the compressed gas on the inside of the cylinder at the start of the dive has got some weight to it. And as you breathe it and then exhale it, then the weight of the cylinder actually drops. And when that weight drops below the weight of the water that the cylinder is displacing, the cylinder starts to float. As divers, we need to take this shift in buoyancy into account when we're diving because we can't just be floating up to the surface uncontrolled whenever you get to a certain pressure. We need to ascend slowly and that's why we do buoyancy checks the way that we do at the start of the dive and ideally a buoyancy check at the end of the dive with a near empty cylinder in shallow water to know exactly how much lead that we need to carry. What is jumping into water called? Fun. But the official term is a giant stride entry. There's a few ways for us to get into the water, but if you're stepping off a platform into the water, it's a giant stride entry because you want to step out as far as you can. If you just step into the water, the cylinder on your back, because it sticks out a little bit and you're not used to that, that's gonna hit on the edge of the deck behind you that you just stepped off of, and you're gonna have a rather nasty headache as the top of the cylinder smacks the back of your head. You want to secure your mask and your regulator in place and then step out away from the ledge as far as you can so that cylinder doesn't hit the deck and then when the bubbles all settle just check that all of your equipment is attached where you left it and where you want it to be. 
before you dive in, remember to look down, obviously, that you're not gonna jump on top of anybody or anything, and that the water is actually deep enough for you. Slightly bend your knees when you step in. Uh, if you're ever in doubt and you can't see the bottom, if you, basically, you don't want to find the bottom with straight legs. Can you scuba dive every day? If you do it correctly, yes. Scuba diving does affect your body and repetitive diving does compound it, but if you plan things out and you don't push your limits, then there's no reason why you can't dive every single day. The important thing is just to stick to your tables and your dive computer to keep track of your nitrogen levels both in and out of the water. Remember that you still have nitrogen dissolved inside some of your tissues even after you get out of the water, and some tissue compartments can take a long time to flush it all out. You have both fast compartments like the cells inside of your lungs that on-gas and off-gas very quickly, and slow tissues like bone tissue that takes a longer time to clear and flush all that excess nitrogen out. This is what your dive computer is monitoring, but as long as you keep those all at safe levels, then yeah, you can keep diving. The only days where you can't dive are the days leading up to air travel, but of course you learned that in your foundational course. Five more scuba diving questions answered, but if you have any questions, then pop them down in the comments below with the Ask Mark hashtag, and I'll answer those in the Friday Ask Mark. Remember to like and subscribe if you haven't already. We're looking to get as many subscribers as possible, both here and on our Instagram. Thank you for watching, everybody, and of course, safe diving.